Well, I'm Jonathan Worsley, and I'm delighted on this FHS podcast to have Turab Salim with me, who's partner and head of hospitality, tourism, leisure for Mina at Night. Frank Turab, great to have you on this uh, podcast. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Good to be here. Now, Turb, you're often a, a speaker at our event, speaking about the future, the future of hotels, et cetera. And we're going to get into that. But before we do, I just wanted to give our listeners a little bit of background about you and your passion for the industry and why you came into hospitality. Uh, hospitality, that's the only thing that I know in my life. My education, my initial schooling, my master's, it's all about hospitality and tourism. I started from a great institutes like Intercontinental and then Shangri Las and then from operations and moved towards consultancy at a very early age. It was around 25, 24 years old when I started it. So with a lot of background and then entering the consultancy. So this is how I started it uh, 20 years back. And it's in the family as well? No, miss, by mistake, I was supposed to go to Switzerland, do my MBA. I ended up in the... Uh, and uh, doing uh, hospitality because most of my friends were in Switzerland. So I uh, started for one semester, loved it, as went for two years and then ended up doing my bachelor's and then it was so fascinating. Then went to the next level of first master's and then Cornell and then New York University where I did a second master's in uh, tourism, the rubber pack and the asset plant. Well, that's great. And, and of course, you were uh, very helpful for us uh, when you were at al uh, uh before Night Frank and uh, introducing us to the team there and uh, bringing the Future Hospitality Summit Saudi to that fabulous uh, al Faisalia Hotel, now Mandarin al Faisalia. So uh, always a huge thank you to you for that. Now, Turab, you're often speaking about uh, the future, the future of our industry so give us some of the key trends that you see at the moment and how they're impacting uh, impacting us as uh, as an industry. I think you know, hospitality and tourism, they're evolving in a very fast pace and momentum is more towards uh, East uh, Asia and Middle East that are the growing fastest growing hubs of it. If you talk about Middle East uh, or GCC, there are 500 plus, uh, 500,000 keys under development it is once completed, we will end up around 1.3 million keys in the region, which will make it a real powerhouse and hub for tourism. Um, so the region, not only the keys, but also if you look at this uh, uh, west, uh, the momentum will tilt in terms of airline and the top 10 airlines, five to six will be from this part of the world. If you look at the aviation hubs, uh, major aviation hubs, they are not going to be any more uh, simple airports. They will be aviation hubs. They will be from uh, east, um, including the Middle East, with offer three big hubs for airlines. If you look at the airline connectivity, which makes a difference between the successful destinations, um, this region will have amazing airline connectivity to the rest of the world. A single flight can take you all the way to Sydney and all the way to uh, California. Uh, so which will turn the, the, the table the other way around and the tourism, uh, it will help uh, to big the. Uh, in terms of trends, you look at the wellness. Um, wellness tourism would play a major role. There, are, there is around 1.3 trillion worth of uh, opportunity by coming in coming seven, eight years. Um, same experiential tourism is over 1 trillion worth of an opportunity uh, in the uh, coming 10 years. Uh, so wellness and experiential will play a major role uh, in terms of tourism. So these are the trends which will uh, make a difference visually and globally too. If I can just butt in here, Jarab, in, in, in terms of that macro side, I think we're working in one of the most dynamic and exciting places in the world in the Middle East at the moment. And I'm currently with what Saudi is doing and, and now pushing and making it more competitive with some of the other regional countries as well. But with this growth, are you also beginning to see the innovation that perhaps in the past hospitality has been lacking? Are you seeing that innovation being applied to our industry in the Middle East? I think it started, uh, started from Dubai. 
they went ahead of curve and they redefined the way tourism was in the region and now they are redefining it globally too. Saudi followed the same um, um, pattern and they are uh, reinventing the way the tourism is looked into. Uh, look at Neom, Kidia, Diria, uh, you know, the, the way they are planning uh, 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 the Riyadh Expo on the, uh, you know, a soccer World Cup. Look at the mega projects. They are not the usual product. Uh, projects. They, they are unique, uh, they are innovative, they are creative. So if you want to be different, you need to be, uh, bring some innovation and creativity. Is it that design element? Is it the way you uh, do your tourism? Um, is it the way they are going to bring their uh, airline and launch it and connect it? Uh, these are fascinating uh, uh, innovative areas which will make a difference. But are we as an industry, though, keeping up with our peers in other industries in terms of tech and the fast-moving progress towards innovation, sustainability, et cetera? Great question. Unfortunately, we are the slowest to adopt uh, technology. We are the last one. Look at the airport now from the way you can reach from uh, entrance of the airport to your seat without seeing anybody, without, uh, uh, you know, swipe, you know, uh, checking a passport or checking in, checking out. Straight, you sit it through all the scanning processes. Whereas hospitality is still way far, far from that uh, uh, comparison. But it's catching up. I think the AIs, IOTs, and VR is coming, coming very strongly. You like it or not, uh, it's going to come. So you better prepare yourself and adapt to it. Uh, that's the way forward. Uh, uh, technology in terms of AI and IoTs and VR is around 310 billion worth of, uh, uh, of the business in the coming uh, by 2030. So it will happen one way. Uh, a, speaking of AI, we try to play with that a little bit at the events to showcase what's going on. How are you using AI in your business at night, Frank? AI is, uh, is, 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 is not part of our daily processing of reports, uh, you know, um, processing of uh, our data, our research. What makes you different from other is your database research and database uh, um, uh, analysis. Uh, so which, if you uh, do it manually, it takes ages. Now with the help of AI, you can have the solutions in no time. So uh, more accuracy, uh, more uh, uh, processing of data, and, and your research is, is, is a research-based outcome is, is beneficial for the client, for the industry, and also it makes our life much easier. Right. So you're beginning to see the use of that technology in consulting and shaping the way we provide data to our clients. T tell me a little bit more about your particular experience, Tarab, when it comes to your consultancy, your operations, your education, asset management, and now consulting with them um, with Knight Frank. How has that influenced the way you react with clients and how you advise clients? I'm lucky I have a set of expertise which are too diverse. Is it the development? Is it uh, consultancy? Is it financials? Is it asset management? So there are four different angles. And it's very rare you find them combined uh, in one. So I'm lucky to have uh, experience in all, an educational background in all those four areas, which helps to give a a better solution to the client. It helps to understand the, the challenges in a creative manner. So imagine if I'm doing a planning uh, uh, of a hotel. I already know the operation. So I can, in, I can close my eyes and walk through the process because I have done it with my own ads. Same when I do financial planning, I know operationally and development by a sense where we can save, where it is unnecessary, where we need to focus more because I have done it with my own hands. So the bridge helps to give much economical solution than many others because if you have to hire four different consultants and give the same output, it's expensive and it's not fun. It's very rare you would have it. So with me, it, with the, it's, I'm blessed that uh, it, it's as much um, economical and creative solution we can uh, give by knowing all the different assets of the business. I give you an example of uh, um, a construction um, in uh, this part of the world. One of the biggest issues is we are not able to open the hotels on time. They're mostly late. Uh, we overrun the budgets. There are delays. One of the reasons is 
While planning, we don't know those who plan. They don't know the other implications, i.e. the criteria, what is a misless, uh, uh, hotel, uh, 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 Ministry of Tourism requirements, what are the food control authority requirements. Uh, because of my uh, experience in this area, it helps me during fin uh, planning to integrate those uh, criteria and make sure the clients get the best result and they hope on time. That's why both project that we put our hands on and the completion and the opening is much more uh, on time than many other projects uh, which are done uh, in, in the industry, the region. A uh, very good reason to use your services, uh, Turab, uh, because that must be a significant cost to the clients as well. What about in, um, uh, inflation? Has that Does that continue to be a, a problem in, in the region? I think we can see that now there is a, a little bit of a pinch. We can feel it so that uh, costs are, development costs are going higher and which is slowing down a little bit uh, the way we were uh, uh, proceeding on these uh, projects. Um, so the whole region is under construction. So the impact of cost can be felt throughout the region. So I, I don't see it's coming down uh, because the demand is so high and the local resources are limited and we need to import more and more resources. Uh, uh, so I don't see that inflation factor will come down. It might slow down a bit uh, in the coming uh, uh, days, but I don't see it coming down. So we need to find a creative way to bring the cost down in a traditional manner. It will not come down. So inflation will have an impact on you know, our progress in terms of uh, development of these projects. Um, you were uh, speaking at FHS Saudi on the Hotel of the Future, an excellent presentation, I must say, uh, Tarab. And um, I, I recall one of the things you were saying, and that was uh, staffing costs, and that we're laggards when it comes to staffing costs, uh, particularly in the Middle East. Tell us a little bit more about that, and why is that the case? Uh, this is the, will be the is and will become more and more serious issues in the coming days. Staffing, um, um, uh, is the talent is uh, already there is a, a shortage of trained talent, and to acquire and uh, keep it, it will become an issue. And uh, also, second thing is for Saudis, locals, Emiratis, there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, it's, the industry is thriving. Other industries are thriving. So the, it. To retain them, uh, you need to pay, uh, 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 you know, attractive enough for uh, uh, payroll to, to keep uh, retain and uh, keep them, which is bringing the labor cost to the level which is not sustainable. So, in order to, if you want to cope up with it, you need to change the way you manage your hotels. You cannot run the same accounting system you were running in uh, 1940. Turb, is this through outsourcing? Is this is this using technology to help reduce those staffing costs? Three ways to do it, uh, Jonathan. Or number one is uh, we don't have a habit in the hospitality to bring specialist partners. We must bring it. Give it outsource this. We don't need 22, 23, 25 people doing the accounting. Completely outsource it. It's going to happen. You like it or not, it's going to happen. So you do it today. Our source, it's your marketing, our source, it's security, our source is very out, maintenance, housekeeping. Bring partners that add values to you. They are specialists. As a hotelier, you can, as a general manager or hotelier, you can never be specialist in every area. So bring in the specialists, reduce the payroll, and the, you get a better service to the third party specialist whose life is nothing except is it a marketing, is it a, a finance? So get these experts and reduce your payroll. And Second is technology. We are not very good in adapting it. We must adapt. Technology will make the uh, the uh, matter uh, much easier for us. Reliable, consistent. Consistency is a problem in the industry. But through technology, we can bring consistency. So it's outsourcing technology and bringing in partners who are specialists in, 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 in their area. These, this is the way to go in the future. So what does that leave the general manager to do? Focus on your business development. This is your core business. So what is happening right now? You focus on everything else except your core business. So you forgot that regarding is not your business. Marketing is not your business. Um, running after the visas is not your problem. It's your issue. 
your focus should be business development. So the last thing is what the focus now when outsourcing and bringing in specialists, you can focus on your being business, business development. Is there an example in the industry of someone doing this well? It is starting. It's a new uh, uh, branch which are more uh, uh, lean, mean, more uh, technology savvy. So the big boys of the world, uh, if they don't adapt to these technologies, the smaller guys are coming, they're going to come very fast. Uh, they're agile, they're lean, they're going to adapt to the technology and they will make a huge difference in the market if the big boys don't uh, uh, adapt to these new ways of doing business. Interesting. I, I noticed that uh, Alkazama, a lot of the restaurants, for example, were outsourced. Yes, this is, uh, look what, what was, how they turned around the business. They brought in the specialist, the best of the best. These uh, restaurants are coming. So this is not the matter of restaurant making money. How the restaurants are helping the hotel to make more money. Imagine this restaurant has, since they are here, the occupancy has gone to different levels. The areas are gone to different levels. The footfall, uh, earlier the hotel was looking for a footfall. Now the hotel has an issue of uh, containing the footfall because there's a traffic issue. So all of a sudden, having the right partners change the way you do the business. That's a very clever move. Yeah, it make, makes, a, makes a great deal of sense, uh, Tarab. Um, just moving on to the whole ESG, how, how are you as a business um, driving, driving this agenda forward? I think in sustainability, ESG is our core value. Um, if future businesses, they need to succeed um, and they need to uh, be profitable and uh, professionally uh, uh, be accepted in the market, sustainability is, is, is the way to go. So it's no more an option. It's a necessity. You must do it for the better future of our kids. Uh, you must adapt it today. But it's difficult, isn't it? Because uh, many wouldn't know whether they're greenwashing or they're being sustainable, whether they're being compliant, because there's not necessarily the data. I think, look at look at Saudi. They started uh, these new developments um, recently, not long back. And now every development, every mega, giga, or normal project, they're all integrating ESG and uh, sustainability element. So came from nowhere, went to uh, extreme. So if Saudi can adapt it, Dubai has done it, I'm sure. Um, uh, um, and there's a way moving forward. You're right. It's right now. It's a little bit expensive. Data is a little bit not easy to to find. Uh, but with the passage of time, dramatically, uh, uh, things are changing. Technology is changing. Prices are coming down, and data is more and more accessible. So you're right what you said. But in the coming days, you see the ease on pricing. The ease of getting data will be there. Interesting. Um, Trab, uh, just going back to your presentation in in um. In Saudi, one, one of the things you did say was um, the room of the future. You were talking about the room of the future. You were ta also talking about the meeting room of the future. Now, that's of a particular interest to me because, um, you know, if I can innovate, uh, we haven't really innovated much. I don't think the industry generally has innovated much because we still bring everybody together uh, to meet. Humans want to meet with each other. Um, so we do that. We still build these um, great big... Um, uh, stages and, and spend a lot of money doing that. We have exhibition stands. So in a sense, our business model hasn't really changed that. Uh, how do you see it changing? Conference meeting business will change dramatically. Like, uh, you know, AI will play a major role. So you enter the conference room, there is no check-in, there is no check-out. You scan and you're in. You enter the meeting room, um, there is no TV screens, uh, there is no lighting that you can see hanging from the ceiling, and uh, wires uh, all over the place. It's all integrated. Your ceiling will be able to catch your wires by certain uh, meters. Your wall with a colorful painting, it looks like it will turn into a on screen, and you can see the other side of the uh, party uh, uh, you know, uh, interacting with you. And it will be seamless. Uh, it will be um, a clean, neat, and attractive, and um, much more uh, decorative than what it uh, what it is today. Okay. Well, now tell us a little bit about um, FHS World coming around the corner. You, you you're speaking again on the Hotel of the Future, I believe. Is that right? Yes. Uh, I mean, I have few opportunities to speak and present some uh, of our research findings in it. But 
uh, look, I'm uh, part of your FHS since ages, and we have seen it evolve over the years. It's, it's an amazing platform. Uh, it's an amazing networking stage that you provide to the region. Uh, it's an area where uh, stage where you share your thoughts. Uh, you, 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 you bring uh, innovation and you understand where the world is moving towards. It's a, it's a place where you talk about policies, you talk about the funding um, uh, uh, ways and avenues. Um, you look into regional and global perspective. Uh, so I think it, it has multiple uh, benefits from uh, different uh, parties. Is it an investor? Is it a consultant? Or is it a, uh, yeah. So everybody has something to gain out of this platform. And it's getting bigger and bigger and uh, creative every, day, every year uh, passing now. Well, that's a very kind of you to say, and it's it's always great to have you on the advisory board and giving us um, input into how we can innovate and how we can make the the event different and more beneficial for for the industry in in the region. So we've we've thoroughly enjoyed having you as part of uh, as part of FHS, and thank you for your support and contribution to finish off this podcast. Turab, is there anything else that you would like to um, you know? Are we have we missed anything? Taking this opportunity on this podcast just to you know, reveal some of the work that Knight Frank is doing and, and some of the this research that you continue to do. For example, for uh, for Dubai, I know you're going to be, again, talking about the future, but how is it different? What What is evolving that you're really passionate about right now and, and want to explain to the industry? I think tourism in the region will evolve to big, uh, uh, in, in a big manner. Uh, this region will become. So I'm very excited to see this uh, this region evolving right in front of my eyes. Um, um, is it a tourism? Is it a hospitality? Is it a aviation? And those three areas, this region will reach to the top, to the finest of the finest. Is it the airline industry? We will set our standards, which are globally uh, one of its own kind. Is it the hotel quality? Today, even the quality that uh, some of the... Uh, Qatar, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and Saudi now started showing it impeccable quality. You don't find it elsewhere. Our ESG standards, uh, our uh, airline connectivity, so we will reach to uh, to new heights, which will help to create new products too in terms of offerings. Uh, this branded residence is an area if somebody wants to invest, golden opportunity to invest in KSA and the region. Uh, mid market is another area. If somebody wants to in- invest, mid market hotels and the products are, uh, there's a, a huge uh, a gap, and it's profitable. Is 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 uh, returns are much better. Uh, the region badly need more hotel chains, hotel brands. Um, it is an area that we must invest tomorrow. With half a million keys, you can, can still have dozen more hotel operator, and still it will not be enough. A lot of fashion brands are going to turn into a hotel brand and come to the region because this is the place where uh, Bulgari has started this uh, journey, where Armani has started this journey. Uh, so this is another area to, to, to benefit out of it. Um, so I think if wellness tourism will grow out of this region, uh, more and more you see the uh, creative ways of, of wellness tourism. Um, so these are the avenues that, that the one needs to look into it and this region uh, receive how this region will be prosperous in the coming days. And it, and it certainly is a benchmark for the rest of the world, isn't it? Uh, and uh, other regions are going to become more competitive as well, as well as a result of what's going on in the Middle East. It's just beautiful to see that Amorous, um, when my father was one of the Venetian people, part of this uh, setup, and now you see growing one of the biggest dinosaur and airline benchmark in the world. Look at the first class. Look at the lounges. They're redefining the way these uh, airline the business is conducted. Look at uh, some of the hotels. Look at uh, how Armani's, Bulgari's, Jumeirah are dressed. Uh, what they brought to the region. Just a pride. Just a sheer pride for the region. And uh, beauty is um, uh, the uh, other con- uh, cities are competing with each other within the region, which is just beautiful to see. Uh, how this whole region is evolving to a next level. So they're competing with own themselves. There's nothing more beautiful than this, which will get the best out of the, the region. Uh, and this can be, uh, uh, we can show the world how, uh, what are the new standards of uh, hospitality and tourism. I couldn't agree with you more. And, and uh, certainly I'll go out of my way to fly Emirates versus uh, other airlines. Um, you know, particularly when you when you look at some of the, um, the underperforming uh, North American airlines. 
Turab, listen, fantastic speaking to you today. Look forward to seeing you end of the month, end of September 30th, September to the 2nd of October at FHS World in Dubai. Thank you for all your, your enthusiasm, your participation, and uh, look forward to seeing you around the corner. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time, and thank you for having me. Have a lovely day.